Well, we will go ahead and get started. We'd like to welcome Justin Thomas to the interview room here at the Fortinet Championship. Justin, thanks for joining us. You're making your sixth start here at the Fortinet Championship with top ten finishes in each of your last three starts. Um, with that said, just a few thoughts on the decision to come back and play this week. Yeah, I, uh, I, I like this golf course. I like this tournament. Um, I mean, obviously, like Napa as well, it's pretty hard not to, to like, but... Um, it just it hasn't like unfortunately a lot of tournaments in past it just hasn't necessarily fit schedule wise and um, with the way the season ended last year a little earlier I felt like I didn't I just didn't want to take that long off of competitive golf and and um, had an opportunity to come to a place that I really liked and then um, it worked out even better after getting picked for the Ryder Cup uh, to to get a little you know get some competition under my belt before going there so. I uh, had had some nice time off, but also had some nice nice weeks practice, and um, yeah, I haven't haven't gone this long without competitive golf in a while, so I'm excited. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> Max was just in a few minutes ago, and he ended up talking a bit about you, and he's like that is testament to how good of a player Justin Thomas is. He finished the 71st in the FedEx Cup, which isn't bad. Uh, but there's always been just such the high expectations from you as well as people that that follow you. How how much are you looking forward to kind of moving forward with the Ryder Cup coming up and so forth and kind of getting back to what you're um, kind of demanding of yourself? Um, yeah, I'm excited. You, anytime you, um, you know, when you're going forward or, or moving, you don't want to say moving on, but you just you have opportunities to grow and get better. Um, yeah, I definitely am. I'm hard on myself, but and um, but I, I mean, I kind of reminded myself some of that same stuff that Max said, which is very nice of him, by the way. Uh, of just yeah, it, you know, the the fact that I feel like I have been held not only because of myself, but everybody else's expectations of me held to a high a standard that that clearly means that you know somebody thinks something decent of me as a golfer so that's uh that's that's a good way to look at it and that's pretty much what i try to do the end of the year is look at everything as a positive and um but yeah i mean it's it's was never near as bad as, as it always seemed like it was and uh and I, yeah i am i'm excited and and to these next couple of months and, and tournaments here and there that i'm playing in and then once uh, once we get rolling and in, in 24. Okay. Well, with that, we'll take a few questions. We'll start right back here. Hey, Justin. Obviously, we saw on social media you posting about working on your swing. What kind of specific things have you been working on there over the last month to try to, you know, get more consistent? I I just honestly trying to get it, um, just get it in similar positions that I had it when I was swinging and hitting it my best. I felt like 27, 2018, uh, 2019, my best, I guess, ball striking uh, years and. And when I was winning the most golf tournaments, and it just I, – I had a lot more width then, and I just had – my swing was a little bit shorter, and I felt like because of that it was in a, in a consistent – way more consistent, re, um, repeatable place coming down. And, and I just got away from some of that. There were some, some things I was trying to change that I ended up basically overdoing or over-exaggerating too early, and that just got me in some tough spots. And um, I felt like the club was getting too steep going back, and then I had to reroute it coming down. And I said it some last year. I mean, I feel like I, I have really good hands that, that I can make that work for a day or two, but that's not exactly realistic to to do for four days, let alone trying to win golf tournaments at the highest level. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's really just, I mean, looked at so, so, so much old video and just trying to see where it was, see where it was at the end of the season and and, and what are the current, I guess, if you will, feels or, or um, triggers or whatever you want to call it to get me back in similar-ish positions. And um, so it was just a lot of, a lot of balls, a lot of repetition to try to kind of get it back in those slots, if you will. Over the last month, there's been various reports, some contradictory of uh, how much you're kind of owning your own swing, how much mm -hmm. you're still working with your dad, how much you're working with your putting coach. Just want an opportunity to – are you still working yeah. a lot with your dad, still working with the putting coach? Like, where are you at currently? Yeah, some things definitely got lost in translation and um, and incorrect, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I mean, I – yeah, I, John Graham and I are not working together anymore, and that's – it was a very – 
we had a great conversation, and I mean, it's a testament to him, but it's also just, I mean, he understood. He's he's probably harder on himself than I am on myself for him. Um, and I felt like we just had, we'd gotten to a point where everything was fundamentally or mechanically or on the putting green was as good as it could get, but it, it, basically like what I told him is, you know, he can't go out and make the putts for me. I have to figure that out, and that's something only I can do. And, um, you know, it's just a, something where I, I grew up just going out and practicing and hitting putts and figuring out how to get it in the hole. I didn't necessarily care how it looked, and um, I, I didn't – I just – all that mattered was getting the ball in the hole as fast as I can, and that's more what I want to do. And I, and I know that there's a lot of really knowledgeable people out there, John included, that if – down the road, if I feel like it gets to a point where I need to see somebody, then I can. But the hope is that I don't need to. Um, and in terms of my dad, it's the the owning and accountability is just the part that I feel like I lost a little bit in myself. And um, I think the Wyndham was a big week for me because I, I was by myself. And I, I've always taken great pride in being able to adjust um, both – in practice, but also in tournament play, uh, on the run, if things aren't going well, I've, I feel like I've been really good at figuring it out and, and making changes on the course and, and just kind of tweaking and changing things until something clicks. And I, and I just feel like I lost that a little bit. Um, I, I, I am and was very lucky. I mean, I am very lucky to have a team that's very, very involved. And But I just think for me personally, I, I had them – they were there too often be, to where I became dependent on them. And then I just lost all ownership, all accountability to where, you know, I, when things were going wrong, I was looking to them to answer the questions instead of I'm the one that needs to figure it out at some point. And um, so that's just kind of it's, – it's more like how I feel like it was in 2017, 2018 when I was playing my best golf. I mean, my dad came out a handful of times a year, uh, more so because he was working. But – you know, he, he can come out any and all as he wants as, as a dad, but there's just going to be some weeks where, you know, if things are good, I don't necessarily need a coach. And I think that's that's more of just where I want things is like, hey, I'm – you we can we can exchange texts. We can – we'll work, you know, every so often when we're home and, and when it's needed. But when things are great, I don't need to have somebody there with me hitting balls and or, or putting all the time because then it's like I'm just going to end up finding something that's not even there. So it's a, it's a really long explanation to what you said, but that's uh, that's just the reality. It wasn't it, nothing as extreme as it is as much as just me being me again and trying to just, you know, dig it out of the dirt and take ownership and accountability and figure out how to shoot as low as I can again. Because you uh, had so much success, two PGAs, and and you you're on the curve up. Something like that happens. Obviously, we, and I've been around again. The question is, what's wrong? And and you get that a lot. Mm -hmm. All other athletes do when they have a problem. Was that a major uh, concern? Where people kept asking you, "Hey, what's the matter? What's the matter?" Uh. Concern, no. Uh, don't take this the wrong way. Annoying, yes. Uh, it's it is it, it again. It it just it wasn't. It's not. It's not that big a deal. It wasn't that bad. It just was. You know, like you said, I was very fortunate to play some really, really good golf, and I played some really good golf last year. I just didn't have those couple wins in a year I didn't you know finish off a couple tournaments how I felt like I should have and and that's a it's a very 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 fine line out here and I just was on the other side of that line one year um but it you, yeah when you're constantly being told being reminded it's pretty easy to to convince yourself that you're not doing things that well but I'm very lucky to have a great support system and great team around me to remind me that that's not the case and and also I have a lot of belief in myself that I'm not as far off as I think, um, and it all it takes is one week, one stretch, one whatever you want to call it that could just completely flip everything, and no, nobody even talks or remembers it anymore. I asked uh, Max the same line of question. Can you look two or three, four months in advance uh, from now, and what do you make of the new season with the different formats, the special events, the other kinds of events? 
What's your perspective on, on what that means to golf? I mean, I don't think it's going to be much different than this past season was. I mean, we had our elevated events. Um, and I think, I mean, to, to me it was, last year was a great example um, in a couple different ways of just how it can happen, right? And I think it was frustrating because being being in the position I was slash am, it's hard to talk to a lot of the membership about it because, you know, they feel it's a, it's a, oh, of course the rich get richer. It's all you get this. It, well, of course you get this, but it's like, I didn't play well last year. I'm not in the elevated events. Um, I have to earn my way in, whether it's through world ranking, whether it's through qualifying in certain events, trying to get sponsor exemptions. Like that's the reality and that's golf. But look at Adam Shank. I mean, he was in the top five of the FedEx cup for the season with a couple holes left like that that is the reality so you can you can look at it two ways is it like you can complain and talk about how well of course everybody gets that or you can go do what what Adam Shank did you can go do I mean Patrick Rogers one of my best friends for a long time and he had never made to the BMW and and he made it to the BMW for the first time and and now he's in the elevated events like you can you can view to look at it as this is a great opportunity for me to go play well and get in these events or you can just look at it the other way around. And, um, but at the end of the day, it brings all the best golfers into the same place at the same time. And that's what's most important because that's the best product. That's what fans want to see. That's who we want to play against. Um, and I think it's in the end, it's, it's going to be what's best for golf. Justin, uh, welcome to Napa and Silverado. Um, how important is it for you to use this week to, you know, assert your game, get on that leaderboard, and use that as a, to propel you onto that Ryder Cup, you know, to, to have this week, you know, uh, here in Napa where you've played so very, very well. Uh, is, is that in, in, in your mind? Not really. I, I don't think it's that important. I think, um, I mean, I'm, now that I've, I've been picked, I don't have to prove anything. Uh, I don't, I'm, it's just more about, I'm here to try to play well in a golf tournament and, and play well um, and, and try to give myself a chance and, and get in contention. I mean, I, I know when I don't play competitively for two or three weeks, I'm, I'm a little rusty competitively. So I'm sure after, you know, a month and a half, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge to get back into it, but it's, it's something that, um, that I'm excited for. I mean, I, I, did not touch a golf club for two weeks. My club just sat in the floor in my garage after Wyndham, and and I was really excited to go practice and play golf again uh, for because I knew I was playing in this tournament. So I don't, <clears throat> I'm not necessarily putting any. I put enough pressure on myself already to try to play well. I don't need to add to it to try to propel the season or play well for the Ryder Cup or anything. I'm like I said, I'm fortunate where I'm. I'm already on the Ryder Cup team, so I don't need to prove anything for that. And um, I'm just going go out here this week and just try to play as, as well as I can. Justin, how much did losing in Paris hurt? Uh, yeah, it hurt a lot. It's, uh, there, it, it's not fun watching the other team celebrate in front of you. Um, it's just, it's, uh, it's a bummer because, you know, all of you, you work so hard and you, you do everything together as a team and you, you play for your team, but at the same time you lose as a team. So we were all unfortunately the losers that week, but um, yeah, it just, it's, it, it's a different kind of hurt. I mean, I remember being, I, I don't know why I specifically remember being next to Brooks. Uh, I think maybe Alex Norn or something made a long putt on 18. I forget who he was playing and, and they had already kind of, they'd already won. Um, and that kind of started the celebrations, if you will, for them. And Brooks just being like, you know, I've only been on one of these and it was winning. And that is a lot more fun than this is here. So it's just, it's something you don't forget. And it's, uh, it sucks. How much do you think the experience of playing in multiple Ryder Cups helps you in particular? I think it helps a lot. I think, um, I just, I, it's, I try to explain to people. I mean, it's it's nerves I've never had in in golf. Uh, I mean, 
went in two majors 15 times. Like it, it doesn't hold a candle to how nervous I have been in Ryder Cups and how nervous I was on the first tee in Paris. Um, it's just it's a different, it's a totally different feeling, and it's in it's butterflies, it's exciting butterflies, but um, it's just. It's something that I feel like I can use not only for myself, but I mean, I want to help the guys. I mean, I, I think I remember how people were to me in, in 17, the President's Cup, and then 18, in the Ryder Cup. Of, I mean, well, I was fortunate, you know, with Tiger being a, being a captain, and I mean, Jordan obviously was, was super, super helpful. Uh, and he was the most relatable just because of age and, and, the way that we are, but also he had played it enough to where I felt like I could, uh, he was going to shoot me straight. He wasn't going to, you know, maybe give me something a captain might to kind of hype me up or whatever it may be. And so he was very helpful and just, and that's kind of the same thing I want to be to, to any rookie or anybody who would be uncomfortable on our team there. Okay, we got three more. One, two, and then in the back three. Obviously, you, you go over to Rome last week, you get a look at the course, just we heard a lot about in 2018 about the like, golf national and how that course was set up specifically uh, to kind of maybe take away what some of the Americans were good at. Now, having seen that course and being able to play, or you played in 2018, mm -hmm. can you just kind of compare the two courses and what your thoughts were of Marcus Mone? Well, it's the same architect for to start, so uh, it looks very similar. But uh, I played the French Open the year that the the Ryder Cup was in Paris and. Um, they didn't set the course up any tougher for the Ryder Cup. It, it's, it's the Golf National is a tough golf course. It's very narrow fairways, very long rough. Um, that's all I kept telling the guys is is it's this is exactly what this place is. And and other than the length of the rough in Rome, I would say that's the same thing. You have some narrow fairways and some extremely penal rough, but that's what we know what we're going to get over there. So um, it's not a surprise, and it's it's nothing. You know, we got over there. We're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's like this. It's, it's, you know what you're getting into, and you know what you have to do. So it's just about going out and executing, and and just, you know, try to ball strike our way the, the best we can, and, and make the putts when we need to. So you're doing some driver shaft testing this week. Rare for you. You don't switch driver shafts a lot. Mm -hmm. Curious how that went, and if you're looking to make a switch this week with the driver. Yeah, I did some testing with JJ. Uh, they came a couple weeks ago. I uh, I just I felt like I've I wanted a, a little I wanted a longer driver option to have. I wanted something to where you know maybe I travel with it every week and it's like maybe I use it five times a year, maybe I use it once, maybe whatever. Um, it's just three fourths of an inch longer, but I mean it's an it's an instant two or three club speed and. I mean, it, it goes quite a bit further, and um, and it was just something I wanted to have. I felt like I'd, we kind of screwed around, and, and he'd sent me some stuff in the mail but hadn't done, like, a proper fitting for one because I know that my driver's great uh, or works how I want it to. So we found that one, two, to stretch three options, um, and I've, I've driven it really, really well with, with the longer driver, actually, the last two weeks using it. Um, so it's, it, I don't know. I mean, I, I've, I'm going to go hit some balls and make a decision. I mean, it, it'll be most likely just end up using my gamer, but it is, it's just something that I've, uh, I just wanted to have more than anything. And I was hitting it really good the last couple of weeks. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe <laughs> we'll end up playing this more than we thought, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, it's an, it's an instant three to five. It's, you know, when I hit it, hit it hard, hit that hard high one. I mean, it's a 15, 15 yard or so, It's, which is a nice thing, obviously, to have. All right, we'll finish up with Matt. JT, I've been very impressed over the last couple of months just kind of watching you carry yourself through all of this Ryder Cup stuff and just kind of wondering now that you are on the team and you've got that spot secured, if you can kind of reflect on what these last couple of months have been like, kind of a position you've never been in before. Yeah, it was, it was brutal. Um, I told... I told Zach after the fact that I, I compared it to like if you if you had an, an ex girlfriend that you were trying to f you were trying to find any excuse you could to reach out to them to get in contact. That's pretty much how I felt like with Zach. Um, you know, I just I, I 
I understood it wasn't going to be something where I text him and he's like, hey, you know, just to let you know, we're at like a 60%. Ch-. I'm like, no, that's not, you know, that's not what I was looking for in any way, shape, or form. But it just, it, it is. It's very tough when you can't do anything about it, especially I, I literally couldn't do anything about it. You know, the basically all the other picks besides Brooks had the playoffs to play in um, to where they could prove themselves a little bit more or solidify their spot a little bit more. And I just had to sit at home. Um, and it was, yeah, it was, it was brutal. And it was like the, you know, when Zach called, it was, it was a lot of emotions, but like a relief was almost the first thing and excitement. It, it just, it was a lot. I had a lot of sleepless nights. And then I think finally at one point it just kind of hit me. I, I, I had accepted the fact whatever was going to happen was going to happen. And I was okay with that. And I was always going to be supportive regardless of what happened. Um, and I'm just very, very excited, fortunate. Uh, happy that it, it ended the way that it did. All right. JT, thank you for your Thanks. time. As always, we do appreciate it.